topic that we are going to discuss today is perception. And you know, it's such an interesting thing. I think from the morning we are only talking about the perception of you know what the faculty has about the students, what the students have about the management, about the college. So it is all about perception. Now, a simple question as to what do you understand? What is perception? Is perception and seeing is the same? Okay, so someone says individual thinking, someone says psychological something you just said. It's, it's your opinion about something. Okay, so okay. opinion about something, the way you look at it, uh, individual thinking, it is the opinion, it is the psychological learning. So to put all of this together, maybe we can say that perception is when we are getting exposed to a lot of stimuli but we are selectively selecting some of the stimuli we are organizing them as per our needs and requirement and finding an interpretation to it and finally we are responding to it that is what is a complete perception for example now every second every moment is there a particular second or moment in your life when you are not being perceiving when the stimuli is what are the sensory senses that you have your seeing your eyesight your hearing part your smelling your tasting your touching so there is a constant bombardment of stimuli into your life but how much are you taking it for example i'm giving you a lecture and Maybe there is a music going on outside, you know, maybe uh, there is a dance program and there is a blaring music which is coming and now suppose this particular lecture is extremely important for you, what do you do? You try to avoid, do you listen to the music outside? No. You try to focus as much possible to try and understand what is being taught. You quickly try to jot down the important words. Why is that? Means you are doing selective selection of the stimuli. For example, a nurse, you know, if she is working in a hospital, there is so much of post-operative, you know, the medicines and the disinfectants and so much, there is so much of smell, you know, maybe the smell of phenyl in the hospital, and they have a very different kind of a smell. But she ignores all of it. For her, it doesn't matter. But the moment there is a light on the nurse console table, the red light, a beep, Amidst the buzz in the hospital, she knows it's a call for her. She, she is listening to it because she is made to learn. So therefore, we say that perception is sometimes a learned behavior. We are learning certain things, right? Now, uh, the example that we once discussed, the example of the snake, you know, when a small child who picks up a snake and play, starts playing with it, is not scared of the snake because he is unaware of the fear being associated with the snake. Whereas a normal human, a normal adult, in the dark when we see a rope, we perceive it as the snake. Because it is the shape, it is the shape of the rope that which we are associating it with. It is a learned thought process, right? Now for example, if we just play a very simple uh, experiment, you know, something like I say, okay, all of you just close your eyes. All of you, close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, you can imagine anything, but please do not imagine a monkey jumping. Close your eyes. You can imagine anything, but please do not imagine that a monkey is jumping. Now, you may open your eyes. So how many of you saw the monkey jumping? Right? So I am giving you a instruction, you are hearing that do not imagine that a monkey is jumping. But your mind has learned the concept of a jumping monkey. You have seen a jumping monkey, right? So irrespective of what you hear, you are still seeing the jumping monkey, right? So sometimes there is a clash. For example, if, if, if I tell you, uh, let's take another very small uh, example. Now all of you again close your eyes. Okay? Just close your eyes. 
and imagine that a fresh lime, a lemon, it is light yellow and light greenish in color, circular, you are holding it in your hand, you are slowly taking it closer to your nose and you are getting the lemon fresh smell. Now you take a knife and you cut open the lime into halves. Some of the juice falls off and you take the half cut lime or the lemon and you use it, squeeze it into your tongue, onto your tongue and you squeeze it harder and you feel all the lemon juice in your mouth. Now you open your eyes. How many of you felt the uh, tingling of your salivary gland? How many of you felt water in your mouth? So again, it is, you know, you have experienced lemon in the past. You have tasted lime in the past. But on the contrary, if I give you a word which you never know the meaning of, you know, I, I can just take any word and I just give you a word which you don't know the meaning of, probably you would be blank on that particular level. So to bring together what we say that perception is getting in touch, it is the constant receiving of stimuli. When we get exposed to stimuli, we receive stimuli, we organize all these stimuli as per our understanding level, as per our interest level, as per our psychological need level. What, what I want to perceive, I shall perceive. Right? As per my requirement, my need, I will select what is required, rest I will leave. And then I organize it. I interpret it, I derive to a conclusion that this is what it means and therefore finally I respond to it. So every moment we are perceiving. Now someone can say, why are we learning perception in an OB class? Why? Because every moment, what are we doing? We are perceiving. Every moment I am interacting with a human person. So every time, for example, when you first came to the college and I didn't know you and you don't know me, so after the first class, I make some judgment in my mind, right? Maybe this person is, you know, the studying kinds or maybe this person is not the studying kinds. Now let me tell you, these assumptions could be right or wrong, but it is getting affected by the way I am looking at you affected by the way maybe my thought process are. It's a projection. You know, maybe in my college days, if I associate honesty and hard working, maybe I am trying to look at the same thing in my people around here. Right? So the way you judge a person is being affected by perception. In an interview, when you go for your interview, why is it said that you should be dressed properly and you should be dressed to kill and you should be very impressive? Impression management is again a part of perception. Even companies are doing it, isn't it? Brand management, your brand, your brand image, you want to make others feel good about you. You want to behave in ways which is, you know, classified as good behavior. So who is this that who is deciding which is the good and the bad? It is we ourselves. It is what the society feels about us. It is what people... So when you're going for an interview, the inter the person who is taking your interview is again, there are some subjective chances of some subjective biases. There is some perception and maybe that is why these days interviews have been divided into so many, you know, there is a prelim round, and the second round and group discussion and psychoanalytical, you know, psychometric tests and so many other things because we want to break that subjective bias. When you give in your assignments and you say, oh, this is partiality because ma'am feels this girl is doing very well in every other thing, so she's given me more marks. Again, your functioning on your perception, performance appraisal, when you're, per when you're appraising your juniors, you know, as an HR manager, when you try to find out what kind of work level has my junior done. So again, performance management, performance appraisal, that is once again a cause of your 
perception, right? So there are various several examples that we can take off. So there are certain situational factors, physical setting, social setting, organizational setting, perceivers' characteristics like needs, experiences, values, attitudes, personalities, characteristics of the perceived, what is being perceived, the nature, size, appearance, location, and everything together affects the individual's perception. We will go into the details of each of this. When we say every moment there are internal and external stimuli. Externally there is a lot of stimuli. For example, if I just come and you know I, I do this to you, you blink your eyes, right? It, it could be me trying to affect you, just you know take you by chance or to surprise you, right? Now you could feel Okay, this is just a small, uh, let's say a small action, but you could say, oh, why did she behave like that? You know, why did she do that? You know, was I not paying enough attention? You know, someone at the back might feel, uh, ma'am really takes you by chance sometimes. You know, it is what your thinking affects. Let's get into the details of all this. When we say selective, see, every time there's an external and internal uh, stimuli, which we are taking, so we are organizing all of that. This again gets into selective attention. Let's take nature. The thing which you are observing, the nature of that particular thing affects you. For example, if I show you a slide, you know, if I'm just talking to you, this is one. Second, I show you a PPT presentation, a slide, which will be one step more attractive. Now if the slide has images of, you know, let's say trees and landscape and uh, maybe some nice brook flowing, more attractive. If I have human figures in that, it will become a shade more interesting. If I add some sound and audit, or, you know, auditory uh, volume into it, if I add a music into it, if I put a rhyme behind it or some interesting sound, it will become more effective. Now if I add motion into it in the form of a movie or a slide, it becomes more attractive. So out of all the others, you want to look at something which is nice, attractive, colorful, moving with motion. So that means the nature of the object that you are looking into also matters. 